see what we have going on this week. Okay, so let's get started with question number one. This one comes from Charlie Vidal. I hope I'm saying that name right. His question is, are you playing a Game Boy Advance? So, if you go back to last week's video, you'll notice right here, it's obviously not here now, it's over there, but um, in the corner of the desk, there was a Game Boy Advance sitting there, and I put that there, and I wanted to see if anybody would notice it, and someone did. I was like so pumped up whenever, uh, whenever someone commented about it. But yes, I still play Game Boy Advance. I also like I, we have a Wii, and we play nothing but old um, Mario games. So, anyway, then he also asked uh, what game I was playing. <laughs> Pokemon Yellow, bro. For real though, Pokemon Yellow. Man, you're '90s kid. You're like me gotta be playing Pokemon. So that's question number one. Okay, on to question number two. This one comes from Sam Corrigan. He says, ever tried a Micro Terror? If so, what do you think? I have tried. I've tried, I've tried most of the orange um, amps. The store that I work at is a um, orange dealer. So I've tried like the tiny, the micro, the dark, the dual, is that one? Um, right, a bunch of them. And I really like them for how tiny those things are. They sound, um, like huge, the micro. I think I called it the tiny chair, but the micro. Um, but yeah, they, they're so cool that it's such a small amp and it sounds good. Uh, my buddy Ryan down at RNA Music, he's also an orange dealer, um, but and he loves the orange amp. I remember he brought one up here. I can't remember what he brought exactly, but um, he played it and it sounded great. But yeah, the micro, it's amazing. You know, for such a little amp to be so loud and actually have good tone and all that stuff. It's really cool. My favorite is the Dart Terror. I think that's my favorite out of all of them, um, of the small, of like the Terror series. But yeah, you know, Micro Terror rocks. Question number three. Let's see if I can figure out how to operate my computer or not. I think it's smarter than I am. This one comes from Bradley Katz. Hope I'm saying that one right as well. He says, "So I was wondering, how much time do you spend on arpeggios and sweeping?" Um. I'm sweeping, not much time at all. It's a technique I don't use very often. Um, I spend much more time, if it's a picking thing, on... Um, I'm, I'm really trying to get better at economy picking. Um, and hybrid picking something I've done for a long time, but I'm always trying to get better at that. And then like the obvious ones, like alternate picking. So, um, I do those. I mean, I do spend time on sweet picking, but um, my focus is usually not on that. Now, as far as arpeggios go, I spend a lot of time on those just because I love the way that um, arpeggio sounds. It has such a unique sound. It doesn't sound like a scale. If you're a student of mine, I'm always saying this, our goal is to make a scale not sound like one. And our arpeggio is a, is a perfect way to take notes from a scale or like a chord um, phrase or something like that and, and put it together. And it really just has this big dynamic sound to it. And um, you know, I just love the way that a, a nice arpeggio sounds, whether it's swept, um, picked out, string skipped, tapped, they all just sound cool to me, and I like all of them. So I will do one more question today, because this one's kind of like a, a two-part question, so it's a little bit long, but um, I wanted to do this one. This one is from Steph, I'm gonna say your, wrong, your name wrong, man, Stefan uh, Krunik, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully I'm like within the spectrum of how you say your name. He says, I've got two questions, please answer them. One, why are you using a Fender Mustang amp and not a more expensive tube amp? You've got a very expensive guitar and the amp seems cheap. I believe your Charvel has got more potential than that amp. Um, I think it just kind of comes down to personal preference. 
As far as amp, I had a big tube amp. Uh, to be honest, man, I had a giant one. It was the 65, well, I had the Randall B2 for a while, and it was, you know, 4 by 12s and all that. And then I had um, a 6505 Plus. This is when I was playing out live and stuff like that. And I had those, but like I never used them at home just because they're so loud. I mean, they're like 100 watt tube heads. And I forget what the, v the V2 was. I think it was like 150 watts or something, which is just crazy to have an amp that that is that loud. So um, as I, I kind of got out of the band thing, this is around the time I started doing YouTube stuff. Um, I just sold it. I wanted stuff, better computers. Um, and things like that to focus on like the video editing and teaching side of um, I guess what I do as, as in my career but um, so I just kind of sold them um, and I used the little Fender G-Dex for the longest time just they were just great little practice amps and then um, my buddy at, at work Rusty Kirkpatrick Rusty Kirk mullet he doesn't have a mullet that's an inside joke but um, he kind of turned me on to these um, I always played them and liked them but, and he got one and really showed me how they worked and they do a lot of stuff. Um, as far as, you know, cheap amp, I imagine it's, it's considered cheap compared to tubes. I don't know if I'll ever go back to tube amps, to be honest. Um, the, the solid state stuff has just come so far. And around in August, I should be getting um, an Axe FX uh, XL, so like the new one. So again, I'm, you know, I'm kind of not going the tube route again. So that's just kind of um, what I like. I like having great tone at low volumes. And um, these things get pretty loud. I think the Mustang 3 is a, is it 100 watts, 120? I don't know, I mean, it's solid state, but um, but that's why, you know, I just like having low volume, good tone, good tone to me anyways. And the second question is, I put 11, okay, I put 11 gauge strings on my electric, I ripped the calluses off my ring finger, ooh, I hate when that happens. Um, and it hurt me so much I could barely play. I took a break a few days and now I can't, Get the grip on the strings. My playing is and has been awful for the past four or five days. It's like I've taken away six months of playing. How do I fix this? That's always um, always sucks. During the wintertime, my fingers split really bad because the you know the lack of humidity, and um, I have a horrible time with stuff like that. And I don't get to play as much during this uh, winter as I do during the winter. <laughs> during the winter as I do during the summer. Um, I always say. If you're having a hard time overcoming some hurdles, always go back to that fun factor and, um, you know, give it a couple days. I think it'll all come back and then you'll be back to normal. Um, I got really sick one time for like two weeks and I literally did not play my guitar or teach or anything for two weeks. And when I finally was able to um, come back and play, my hands were so stiff and rusty. And the first thing I did, I was like, oh man, I sound like crap. And I was like, you know what? Let's play. And I play like a journey song or something. So that is my advice to that. But that will wrap it up. Hope I didn't talk too long for you guys. This is lunch break Q&A number two. Negatory on the sweet tea today. I'll make sure that that problem is solved. But if you guys have questions, please leave them below in the comment section. And um, I'm posting another one of these videos next week. And I will pick four or five of those comments and you will be featured here. Um, if you have other questions for me that maybe you don't want on here, if you want to ask anonymously, um, I have one of those fancy pantsy um, Ask FM links that I'll start putting at the bottom of my um, descriptions in the videos. So that is it. Peace out, guys. Keep rocking. Grab your guitars. Drink sweet tea. Spin in a office chair. Just do something, and I will see you next time.